Good morning. It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I'm running a little late today, but I've had my shower and I'm ready to go for the day. Um, I've got quite a few things on my plate. We've, uh, I didn't tell you guys, but our dryer, our dryer tore up, which doesn't surprise me because it's a Samsung. I hate to be ugly, but when we moved in here, we had a Samsung washer and dryer that came with the house. The washer um, tore up a few weeks after we moved in, and I had it replaced with a GE washer that I absolutely love. It actually fills up with water, and I've told you all about it before. It's amazing, and it's not inexpensive. It's not one of those real fancy washers with electronics. It's just got knobs. Let me fix my hair. So anyway, I came in here, let's see, Tuesday, and I actually I put, let's see, I put some clothes in the dryer on Monday, and I hit the button, and it didn't come on. So I came back in here, and I thought, oh gosh, the dryer's not coming on. So I did it again, and it still didn't come on. And so then I realized I had uh, my dryer was torn up. Well, I wasn't going to pay somebody to come out, look at it, then have to order a part and wait several weeks to get it in because I don't like the Samsung brand anyway. So I ordered a new dryer. It's in and you can tell I'm already doing laundry this morning. Um, I'm running a little late, but I'm getting a lot of stuff done. Um, Rhonda left yesterday and she's already on here saying hello. And they gave me a gift and I have to show it to you. I have so enjoyed it, Rhonda. Um, it's weird because I hung it up in there and we never heard it sing when y'all were here. But I went in there and I pressed the buttons after y'all left and it started singing on the hour. And I was so excited. So I've got to show you guys this clock. Rhonda, they make different ones with different birds. I couldn't believe it. What's cool about that is I might get another one, hang it up in the same room, and set one like three minutes off from the other. So one bird will sing, and then the next bird will sing. Because I just love birds. Y'all know how much I love them. Well, guess what? They also have one with fish. You know, after Chris said that, that's hilarious. So y'all don't send him a fish one, because I'm going to get him one for, his, for Christmas this year. All right, look, this is a bird clock, all right, and every hour it sings, and I'll press some of them. I got to go all the way around, but you can press them. Can y'all hear me this morning? this morning so I, I put the link on there in case you want one if you love birds as much as I do they're fun I put it out in the sunroom it doesn't seem too loud that it wakes us up or anything crazy but anyway no in the same room it would be pretty loud but if you put it in like your living space it probably wouldn't um gosh I have a pile of mail that I need to open and just stuff laying everywhere Laundry everywhere. Woo! But today's a new day. Friday. It is Friday, October the 1st. That means I get to draw the winner of the Collard Valley Cooks Apple Apron. How exciting is that? Um, and of course, I'm not doing it right this second, but I'm going to do that today. And so we'll have a winner today. My eyes are watering. I use a different kind of shadow to put some pink on. And it always does that when something's different. Anyway, um, so I get to draw the winner today. So that'll be fun. I go back to the chiropractor today at 1 o'clock. So I've got a, a, full a full plate. Let's hop on into Bible study. Why don't we? today. Thanks for joining us on Real Southern Woman. Please stay for Bible study. Um, let's see. 
So if you're wanting one of those clocks, of course, I got the link at the very top. I've also got a link at the very top that uh, walks you through the salvation. Um, if you're not saved or you want to be closer to God, you can read that and it will help you this morning. All right. So we're going to start. This is October the 1st morning reading. It comes out of the Song of Solomon. Um, Solomon was one of my favorite people in the Bible. And this says, Pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. Pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. It says, The spouse desires to give to Jesus all that she produces. Our heart has all manner of pleasant fruits, both old and new. And they are laid up for our beloved Jesus Christ. At this rich autumn season, and it, it is now fall, it says, um, the, at this rich autumn season of fruit, let us survey our grocery stores. We have new fruits. We do. We have new fruits. If we go in the grocery store this time of year, you could find cranberries fresh and, and, and uh, all the squash. And it's that time of year. Pumpkins. It says we desire to feel new life, new joy, new gratitude. We wish to make new answers and carry them out by new labors. Our heart blossoms with new prayers and our soul pledges herself to new strengths but we have some old fruits too there there is our first love a choicest of fruit that jesus delights in there is our first faith that simple faith by which having nothing we become possessors of all things me and Roger were talking about that while she was sitting here yesterday about how um, we do have some in our family that just will not submit and humble themselves for salvation. And you do have to humble yourself in order to be saved. And it's hard when you're an adult to get to that position where you will truly humble yourself and surrender to Jesus Christ. Um, most people that are like that say, oh, I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Um, everything's all right. I believe in God. I talk to God. But they still will not submit to Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and have a spiritual change and rebirth in Jesus Christ. Most of the time it's because they want to believe there's other ways or different ways or other things that they must do before they're really reborn. And it's really still stemming mostly from pride because they want to be in control of their salvation. It's hard for them to understand how simple it is. Just like it says right here, there is our first faith, that simple faith, by which having nothing, we became possessors of all things. Doesn't have anything to do with us. Nothing really you have to understand. You just have to have faith. But in order to have faith, you have to be humble. And we talked about that yesterday. It says, there is our joy when we first knew the Lord. Let us revive it. We have our old remembrances of the promises. How faithful has God been? In sickness, how softly did he make our bed? In deep waters, how calmly did he lift us up? In the flaming furnace, how graciously did he deliver us. Old fruits indeed. We have many of them, for his mercies have been more than the hairs on our head. Old sins we must regret, but then we have had repentances which he has given us, by which we have wept our way to the cross and learned the value of his blood. 
We have fruits this morning, both new and old. But here is the point. They are all laid up for Jesus. Truly, those are the best and most acceptable services in which Jesus is the solitary aim of the soul and his glory the end of all our efforts. Let our many fruits be laid up only for our beloved. Let us display them when he is with us and not hold them up before the gaze of men. Jesus, we will turn the key in our garden door, and none shall enter to rob you of one good fruit from the soil which you have watered with your bloody sweat. Our all shall be yours, yours only, O Jesus, our beloved. What a sweet thing to say to our Jesus. Can you say that? Are you storing up your fruits for Jesus? And if not, think on these things today and think about um, how sweet it is to be able to save up all these fruits to lay at Jesus' feet one day when we get to see our Savior actually in person. I want to say in person, but we're not, we're not really going to be a person. But we're going to be, our soul's going to go to heaven. And um, we will get a new body. But what a sweet thing to think on, right? To be able to lay up all this stuff for Jesus. May we produce fruit through the Holy Spirit's fruits, right? Um, I hope y'all have a wonderful and blessed Friday and a, an even better weekend in the Lord. Um, I've, got, I've got to play catch up today and read your messages and do all of that. Um, today I'm actually by myself, but I do have an appointment at 1.15 to go to. But I should hopefully between today and tomorrow get caught up. So if some of you have asked me some questions, uh, maybe I'll get to you and have some answers by the end of the weekend. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your blood, that you have sweat in our garden. That blood that has saved our soul, Lord, nothing could be more precious. May we produce some fruit in our garden for you so that one day we can lay them at your feet, not for men to gaze upon like it says, but just so that you know where our heart is. May our heart long to produce fruit for you. May you give us the knowledge and the faith that we need, Lord, so that we can do what's right in our garden here on this earth. One day we're going to be with you, and we are so looking forward to that day. Be with all of those who are out there listening this morning. May you keep them safe. May you keep them from temptation. May you calm their hearts and give them joy no matter what they're going through. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed Friday. And thanks so much for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we're not ashamed to say it. I will see you guys in the morning. Love ya. Bye.